Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine What's a light your story? on incredible What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney, focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we are joined by Kim DeCaro. Welcome, Kim. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited to have you on the show too. You're, you've been on quite a journey and I let's just dive <laughs> right into it. Tell us a little bit more about your unique abilities and journey and, and journey into the CrossFit world. Well, I started CrossFit five years ago when my husband brought me into the gym for the first time. And um, well, I am a blind athlete, so going into the gym was terrifying, and I really thought it would be impossible for me to even begin CrossFit, let alone be successful in it or compete in it in any way. Um, but as I <clears throat> became more comfortable with myself and my abilities, um, I started competing in CrossFit competitions and the journey has just been endless since. And so when you first got back into the gym or first entered the gym, like what were some of those experiences, feelings and like anything funny go down? Well, I, when I first started at the gym, I was still terrified to tell anybody that I couldn't see. I've always had a big confidence problem with even admitting to people that I was visually impaired or then totally blind. And so I always thought even now to this day, like I use towels on the floor um, for texture around my equipment or where to know, kind of have an idea of where I am. And I put white towels down and I do always think like, gosh, new people probably come in and think like, I have some serious OCD problems or like cleanliness issues and things like that. But from the very beginning, everybody was supportive. You know, at first, even some of the coaches didn't quite know what to do with me and would like do things like, you know, snap their fingers, like, come on, come on, Kim, come on, like. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not a puppy. You could just grab my hand. <laughs> and um, no, I mean, overall, it's where I've always felt actually safe and secure about myself. And over time, I've taught the people around me that, you know, people with disabilities or people that are blind, um, you know, we can do just as much as the next person just a little bit differently and I've taught just by being there uh, members and the coaches a lot as they've taught me the same and it's just been the the gym really is where I feel the best it's the outside world where the funny and weird things happen that you know still kind of crush me more so well, there, there's so many teaching moments in life and especially in, in your interests, your activities, your hobbies, your sport of choice, your career. And like, I feel like as long as you always have like a willingness to try in the beginning, to enter the door, to give it a shot, you get to figure out, you know what, if this is for me or it's not for me. Yeah. And, and, this, know, and the sense but, of humor. <laughs> yeah. It's so much about having a sense of humor because... I don't know for you, but for me, it's things don't always work out as you plan. And there's, it's kind of fun how to learn it, how to do it, how not to do it in 10 different ways. But then when you finally figure out how to do it, it's like, oh yeah, I wish I kind of did this from the beginning, but I, I, I got there. We got there. Yes. Yeah. And, and being willing to keep 
trying and not feel embarrassed. And I mean, that's life lessons for everybody. I think just, you know, I think we tend to then think we're being, well, because we probably are, being watched more or judged a little bit harsher in some ways. So there is more of this like uh, pressure to to do things correctly or you know something like that but it's like I I have to remind myself like who cares what those people think you just keep doing you and you'll you'll show yourself that you can do it yeah and so much in life I uh, I've I've learned in my own journey as well as the only one that can truly stop me is me yeah and if I create barriers for myself or the embarrassment or the other things like it's no, so much of the world is not judging you as much as you think. And guess what? If they are judging you, you can give a, you can make it an opportunity to teach them. Or if mm -hmm. they're really judging you in a negative way, it's like, who cares? Screw yeah. them. They're not yeah. going to be a part of their life. That's just an instant and a moment in time. Yes, absolutely. So what do you, what do you love most about CrossFit? Oh man. Like I said, you know, I, is that sorry that's on my we'll start oh my over with that one so what do you love most about crossfit um well like i before crossfit when i i was born with retinitis pigmentosa it's a degenerative eye condition so i was diagnosed when i was five so i started losing my vision from the get-go and it was a slow process of becoming totally blind so all growing up I was a dancer and a gymnast and especially with dance it really I could never like I really could not admit to people that I couldn't see very well if I went to an audition and said something like oh can I stand in the front of the room so I can see the instructor better um because I'm visually impaired, I would get cut right away from whatever I was auditioning for because I was seen as a liability. I mean, even growing up in school, I wasn't allowed to take PE class because it would have been a liability. But so it made me really self-conscious and it made me even more introverted about my disability. And so from that, going from that version of myself to going into CrossFit, the first um, CrossFit competition that I ever did, I had, you know, I, I still wasn't sure about telling people that I couldn't see. And at this point, yes, I was totally blind, but you know, I, I just would say to the judge, okay, I can't, I can't see, but don't worry. You know, I got this. It, it's fine. I had my partner, my coaches, my husband. And by the end of the competition, or maybe not even the end of the competition, people were coming up to me and saying, oh my gosh, we just found out that you can't see. You're incredible. You're so brave. You're so strong. And I was celebrated for not just being blind but just being an athlete that could do it and ever since then I mean it's just never stopped of the support of the community and I mean here we are now and it just made me feel so confident in who I am completely which that it changed my life and that is undoubtedly I mean beyond being able to lift and do things like that. Oh, it's just the, the self-worth that has come out of the sport. Uh, for people with disabilities that are interested in CrossFit, what recommendations would you give to them? I would recommend they just, you know, be brave and, and go. Um, there's CrossFit gyms all over the country, all over the world. I mean, you can find them anywhere and you know if you you go and 
the best thing about CrossFit is that everybody there is on their own journey. So I'm the only blind member at my gym, but I'm not treated differently than the next person who has a knee injury or is trying to lose 100 pounds or is there to rehab a sports injury or just trying to be a competitor. I mean, everybody is on their own journey and everybody needs something different from the coaches and from the community. And that's what it's all about is the, the community celebrates everybody, no matter what their difference from the next person is. So if you go and you don't feel comfortable there, if you don't feel like you're getting what you need from the coaches or they do seem, or the community doesn't seem to take you in, go to the next gym. They're, they're everywhere. But adaptive sports is growing so rapidly and inclusion is so much more available and, you know, like known that the, the gyms are, are very aware of it, especially now that adaptive CrossFit is a legit thing within within the sport. So I'd say just just go for it or reach out to other CrossFit athletes, adaptive CrossFit athletes like like me. I mean, we're all over the internet. So just reach out and trust me, we love to talk about ourselves and help each other out. So, you know, we're always willing to help. All right. So now you kind of gave advice for people that are at that initial stage, but like, I want to learn more about competitions. So tell me more about like some of the competitions you've been a part of and any memorable experiences and events from, from those competitions. Oh, I mean, every competition is so memorable. There's something, but I started my very first, well, my very first competition was just a local competition or um, I'd say like, because gyms do a lot of like in-house competitions and I did those, but then going into adaptive CrossFit, I um, found Wheelwad on Instagram, and I I noticed so they have a CrossFit Open or online qualifier, which would bring you to what is called the CrossFit Games, or sorry, the Wheelwad Games, which is the biggest adaptive competition in the world. And so I ended up qualifying by literally a hair of a miracle. And so my first big competition was up in Canada at the 2019 Wheel Water Games. And, you know, that is what really fueled my fire to continue to compete and be a part of this because and once again, it's, you know, the community, we're, we're all, in a sense, these, how we feel, like misfits of society, and we come together, and it's just instant family, instant friendship, nobody, nobody is judging anybody, and everybody's having a blast, and it's grueling and hard and nobody's getting excuses you know nobody's given a pass it's just you are there because you are an athlete and you are going to compete so and I just remember standing once that competition was over and we were leaving and I I just remember standing outside as everyone's kind of packing up and just thinking like god this this is it like this is where I belong. These people are, they're it for me. And so, you know, you make these instant friendships as well. And then you're only going to really see these people because we're from all around the world at um, competitions. <laughs> so then you, you really want to go to the next competition too, to be able to see your friends. And so from, That's it. yeah. So from there, I, um, I qualified for Wadapalooza, which is a CrossFit competition in Miami, Florida, every year. And it is one of the largest CrossFit competitions in the world. And it is, fi it is filled with able-bodied 
and adaptive athletes. There are, I don't know, let's say like 21 different divisions that compete. There's the elites, the, the master's athletes. So those are like different age groups. There's teenagers, there's teams of athletes. I mean, it is truly a fitness festival. And that was different than Wheelwad in the sense that it's not just for adaptive athletes. So in in that in this case then the stands are filled with thousands and thousands of people and they are learning themselves even you know these able bodied athletes and just fans they're learning the true capability of people of us of and it's just Every competition is just so different, but so incredibly rewarding. I mean, I even was just talking yesterday because I did just qualify to go back to Waterpalooza um, coming up in January. Thank you. I'm so excited. And, you know, last, well, this last January when we were there, there was an event that had heavy snatches and the snatches when the barbell goes from the ground all the way up over your head and I'm on the stage with 20 other athletes we're all in our lanes and obviously it's I can't see anything so to me it's trying to just focus that it's just me and my husband on the stage and I the weight was really heavy for me And other athletes are just throwing it up and going on their way through the workout. And I kept failing the lift. I failed the lift. I failed the lift. And finally, I hit the lift. And the whole stadium erupted in cheers. Like, so much so that I could physically feel like a wave of energy hit me. And it was like, whoa. Like, all these people like and then after that you could even hear i'd fail because we had to keep going i'd fail the lift and you'd hear the whole place go oh oh right and then i'd hit another lift and you know it like i said i lost I, i lost that event i came in last but i walked off the stage feeling like i won the super bowl and afterwards you know people were so wonderful congratulating me and I I didn't even win right and that's that is probably just one of the most magical moments of competition that I'll never forget it and that's really what it's all about that's so cool and I love how you're talking about how you have so many new friends and it's like I know when I had my spinal cord injury I was thrust into this new world and I know they, they are, I now have a, a new group of friends. And it, to tell you the truth, it's, I don't know if you feel in the same way in the CrossFit world, but I speak spinal cord now. And I feel like I do adaptive sport. I, I speak that adaptive sport and it's, mm-hmm. you become, you come, become a family almost. And when you do these events all around the world and get to get together, it, it almost feels like a family reunion or yes. yeah. like a, something of that sort where you get to see them every year and. And, and it is a group of people that, you know, they, they actually get it. You know, they understand the mental struggles, the physical struggles that you go through. And maybe yours is different than mine, but you, you get it. Like yeah. you, you get that, like just what people can't understand because they haven't lived in a, with a, a disability that truly affects every aspect of your life and so you know now we have three adaptive athletes at our gym and they it's just so wonderful because I always know like there's someone here with me that they they get it they get me they understand what we are going through every day the tiny struggles the big struggles and the little wins and the big wins and it's, it's priceless. And for, for people that want to continue following your journey, I want to give, make sure we give a little Instagram plug because 
you almost have 15,000 followers. I love that. But your, your Instagram name is awesome. Can you tell everybody what it is and how they can follow you? Yes. My Instagram name is Kim Possible, XOXO, K-Y-M-P-O-S-S-I-B-L-E-X-O-X-O on Instagram. It's awesome. Uh, you've got, you got a great following and you have great content. So keep that going. And um, so the, the, we have a few more questions left before the end. And uh, I love to ask, what does, what does accessibility mean to you? Well, accessibility means, makes it so I, accessibility is anything that makes it so I can function in this world like anybody else that can see. So accessibility to me is things like voiceover on my phone. So I, you know, that's a big question people ask me or they write in my comments like, can somebody read this to Kim? Or how do you, who puts up your post? And, you know, people just need to be educated. They don't, they just don't know. They don't mean to be ignorant, but I can do it myself because Apple products are incredible. And there's a feature called voiceover that anybody can turn on their phone and it makes a screen reader. So I can go into my own email and type my own emails and uh, post my own Instagram post. I mean, of course I have people sometimes double check what my video even looks like, but it's just anything that makes it so I can function in this world pretty equally to somebody else that can see. I love that. And if you had one message for business owners, why they should cater to people with disabilities, what would that be and why? Well, I would definitely say because what I've come across in my life is that for the most part, society, people assume that I can't before they assume that I can. And if I'm willing to walk into a business, whether I'm, if I'm looking for a job, and if I believe that I am qualified and can do this job, then I should be given the same exact opportunity as the next person. I also think it's very, very important because people like you and me, I could be sitting at home just receiving social security my whole life. And what is that gonna actually do to help society in general learn about people with disabilities? What is that gonna do for my mental and physical health? What is that gonna do for the workforce? I mean, we can't just assume that people can't and I don't wanna be treated like I can't. You know, People actually will say things to me like, like, well, you, how do you hold a job? I'm like, but I, I do what I, I, I'm a massage therapist. That's, I can do that. I've been doing that forever. You know, and that's the whole going back to me being a dancer. Um, and I was treated like I couldn't before anyone even knew that I could. And so I think and then that's. They see your, they see and experience uh, your, your skills and talents. Yeah. But you have many skills and talents. And it and it's the same when it comes to even CrossFit. And I think of this with my own children because I have two boys. And like, for example, you know, just hanging out with them in my normal life, you know, people will come up and say to my son, when I'm standing right next to him, they'll say like, Cooper, you can bring your mom down these stairs, but I don't know if she can go downstairs. And they, you know, they walk away and Cooper will turn to me and say like, <laughs> mama, you know, I don't know if you can go downstairs when, oh. and then I'm thinking like, what if I didn't do CrossFit? What if I was just not, what if I was just a quote unquote, like normal blind person? <laughs> like, what would that do? that change my son's perception of people with a disability and how would that change my self-worth and I've struggled with that a lot in my life of feeling like I am worthy of uh, of feeling like I am worthy of being even like a part of society or having a job or doing this or doing that and you know and it's because I let 
other people's ignorance, whether it's on purpose or not, get to me. But I think the more that we are able to show off what, that we are truly capable human beings, just like the next person, I mean, I'm not going to ask to be a pilot or a taxi driver, but I know what I can do and I should be able to thrive in that. And you do it well. And that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the bottom line. Um, Kim, thank you so much You're for your welcome. time today, sharing your experiences and to being part of, of our podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, and for everybody else, thank you for being here to the end of Accessory Spotlight Sessions with Kim. And until next time, everyone, take care.